Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Uh, here we are. Uh, this is going to be uh, broadcast on the 26th, I believe, April, uh, Tuesday. Uh, Excellent. Yesterday, we had a real interesting uh, discussion uh, prompted by a, a question that came up of, mm-hmm. you know, what's what's this about judgment, death, resurrection, and what about people? Yeah, and we had, we had a lot of theology yeah, yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we put all that together in a pretty short period of time, but... Um, uh, it is really clear, uh, and you know the question came up: What about people that don't hear? Uh, which, mm-hmm. by the way, uh, since it's not spoken of, mm-hmm. um, I mean, in a, in a way, we know one thing. I do. I do know one thing for sure. Um, if he would have said, "Yeah, they all get to be," I mean, I think 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 about how extreme this would go. They never hear me. They get to go to heaven. Actually. The best thing we could do then would be what? To not hear. Never tell them. <laughs> not tell them. That's the so way that, to go. If they're right. better off not hearing, and they get then to aren't we heaven, better off not telling? Well, them. we would yes. actually be better off making sure we yeah. never tell anybody, because then that gives them the, the ability to get to heaven easier. Right. Uh, well, yeah, that's not what we're commanded to do. We're no, commanded to go, go, and, go and, make and make disciples, disciples and, and baptize them. Nations, so that yes. Um, that's why we have to be careful mm-hmm. to say, well, I guess the people that never hear are good. Mm-hmm. And the Bible, in essence, as a fundamental statement, says that's not true. Right, because he says there is one way. I am the way, the truth, I and the, the life. I am the way, the truth, the life. Yeah. And, and, and you stand condemned unless you believe it. Right. Uh, so we got to take that as it is. Uh, mm-hmm. And that, uh, again, in Romans 1 and 2, it said that the creation itself should move you to right. consider that there's something greater than me than yourself right and then seek me and i and i believe that's probably where it rests somehow that right if that I, if, and and it, maybe and how the holy spirit works in our hearts to reveal himself to us exactly. and things like yeah. that and yeah there, and there's there's a mysteries there's we some, don't fully something know about that because god you know can play out the uh, the future and again i'll give me a simple example um, uh, and you and I have, have, uh, have actually taught this and processed this story, but David and Kayla, mm-hmm. uh, where he had saved the town. Mm-hmm. These men got to finally live and back in a, in a nice place with beds and food and games and fellowship. Uh, and um, Saul's coming after him. And so he says, uh, oh, we'd rather stay here. But... Uh, and, and then we teach this in God's will. Uh, you don't presume anything. You say, now what? Right. So Paul, Paul says, okay, Father, uh, is Saul coming? Uh, by the way, if the answer is no, even though he heard he's coming, if the answer is no, then he says, great, we can stay. Uh, mm-hmm. God says, yep, he's coming. Okay, are the men that I just saved and preserved their town from them being killed and, and their and their wives and kids take them off. Are they gonna Are they gonna stand and make sure I'm protected? And God says, uh, Nope. They're gonna hand you over. Uh, and it wasn't like David said, Well, that's awful. Right. They, sh- they shouldn't. I mean, can I persuade? You know, mm-hmm. Father, what do you have to say about this? Yeah, they're gonna. Okay. Well, then I gotta go. And God says, Yeah, you gotta leave. Yeah, but I've 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 defeated Goliath. I've defeated, I just defeated the Philistines and Kayla. Mm-hmm. You're right, telling me right. I can't defeat Saul? God said, that's not my will. Right. Uh, you got to go. My will is for you to go. Okay, so he goes. Now, now here's the question. Since he left, mm-hmm. there was never an actual situation where the men of Kayla had to hand him over. 
Right. Okay, how did God know? Mm. See, God, he knew what they would do. He knew yeah, their hearts. See, see, God knows the heart. God knows the future. He mm. knows what would have happened had you stayed, David. I can play it out, and I know exactly how it's going to turn out. So that I believe... Mm, that's interesting. I believe right? that there's something possibly about that. Is that, um, first of all, because he says my creation, it speaks to who I am. And, and the glory that I bring just by observing that. Now, by the way, in a sense, and I, and I think, interesting enough, it's easier for people who are in undeveloped places than in developed places. Right. Because right now, do you come across anybody fundamentally that says, you know, gosh, I see the stars. There must be a God, right? Right. I don't right. hear anybody talking about that. They've, they've, they've rationalized everything as... Um, it's part of evolution, and this all happened with you know the cosmos uh, forming itself. Uh, right. So sophistication, interesting, it works against it. Uh, but I think it's related to I show myself anyway. Hmm. Do you have a heart to learn it deeper? I I th I think God said I will know I would know if in fact you would accept me based upon the truth. And I think possibly, and again, it's only possible because it's not spoken of in Scripture. Right. Uh, they might they might wind up in heaven anyway, um, but it doesn't it doesn't preempt us. Right. From, from the the urgency and the need to to speak and share and invite people to the truth. Right, because uh, that is what he has called us to that's do, what he's regardless. Called us to do. And by the way, how does that happen? It's really interesting. Uh, Galatians four uh, two to six says kind of the way to do it pray mm -hmm. that God open up a door right and then you know how to speak it uh, mm -hmm. when I open up a door now by the way um, uh, uh, and he says this in, in Luke chapter 10 as well offer your peace shalom mm -hmm. covenant how would anybody have any interest at all in God based upon upon your life well what they see yeah what they're observing what is, they see is, of his are you yeah. Are you having something happen that I'd mm -hmm. like to know more about? That's really how it's supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why the church is so weak, because I think the church pastors and uh, you know people teach, preach about Jesus, mm -hmm. but people don't observe Jesus. Right. Uh, and they're not encouraging their people to abide and to live it out, receive it. And that's, by the way, how our ministry happened. And we, we, Melinda shared the story. We started with one simple retreat back in Austria at a castle, you know, 20 years ago. Um, right. And it's, it's grown and grown and grown, and we've never announced it. Mm -hmm. You know, now we're starting to because we're at a certain level, but it all happened because people said, well, man, wait a minute. I see the difference in your life, and right. your life meaning the people that were coming to the retreats. Could we do and that? And I want to know more. I would yeah. like to do that. Yeah, sure. And that's how it's happening yeah. for you. I know you. I know your retreats are the same way. Hey, I, heard, I see right. that. Could I could I come and, and learn right. this? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Because that's how it works. Uh, is um, if it's happening in your life, people have an interest in God because who's getting glorified? God. God is absolutely. Uh, so uh, it's a great question, and we talked a lot about it. So I would urge you, if you want to go back, kind of get a good flavor for the simple question about judgment, mm -hmm. death, what happens to believers? Uh, are believers judged? The answer is yes. Uh, in the same way as non-believers, no. No. Uh, but uh, go back to yesterday, the 25th, and go back and, and listen to that because it'll be mm -hmm. good. And one of the things we talked about, and I just made a side comment, uh, uh, when Paul was writing Philippians, mm -hmm. uh, which he's on his way to his death, uh, and he's already understanding it, kind of, yeah, it's time for me to get going. Um, he makes a statement is, I'm, I'm kind of torn. Right, between about, staying about, and going. <laughs> about staying and going. If I stay, mm -hmm. I'm enjoying, and, and, and keep thinking about that. We'll come back to that about, about uh, his prison situation. I'm enjoying my life now, and guess what? I'm still experiencing fruit. And if I stay, right. I'm going to keep he enjoying it. He knew there it, would be more fruit. There's going to be more fruit. Mm -hmm. If I go, it's gain because I get to go be with him. Right. Uh, hallelujah. You know, how cool mm -hmm. is that going to be? 
Uh, and so I made a statement. I said, hey, by the way, when Paul wrote that, it's called the prison epistles, and he was in Rome, he actually had one of the most nicest times of his life. And he lived in, a, in what I call a house arrest semi, you know, country club to what, what we would experience now. And by the way, um, our, our understanding of that, or phraseology of that is uh, there are certain white-collar criminals. Let's say that they um, uh, defrauded somebody or they right. um, they did something with the stock market that they weren't supposed to. Like Mar Martha Stewart. I don't, she might be a famous one. Uh, right, yes, That for they sure. got her for what's called inside trading. Mm -hmm. And they put her in prison. Right. Uh, well, her prison. Her prison it, experience is vastly different. Than vastly <laughs> different. And what it, what it was called is that those guys, because they're not mm -hmm. dangerous, mm -hmm. get to go to the country club. And they live in a what's called, in a sense, house arrest. So they're, uh, they're not, uh, you know, uh, in a cell all the time. They get to enjoy the place. They can't leave the place. Right. Uh, they have great food, uh, lots of fellowship, lots of activity, um, and it's not oppressive because it's not dangerous, and they're not confined in a single cell where you can only get out for maybe an hour a day. Uh, well, Paul was in that situation, and uh, in Rome, uh, because he played his Roman citizen card, I'm a Roman citizen, That's but think about that. Remember, he was arrested back in Jerusalem. Right. Well, he should have been tried there. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if he'd have been tried there, he would have gone into prison. And his prison wouldn't have been that pleasant. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and some of his prison stays were not that pleasant. Uh, it's yeah, the, the it ones wasn't. in Rome that yeah, actually inter were and interesting enough, <laughs> more, in, more pleasant. And this is kind of funny, but one of the places that wasn't pleasant was Philippi. <laughs> mm -hmm. He got arrested there, and he's shackled. Right. He's in a cell, uh, and he's in a, you know, in kind of a dungy place. Uh, right. And so, or he was beaten and, and imprisoned in various places. Right. So all of his experiences weren't what happened at the end of his life. Well, he gets arrested mm -hmm. in Jerusalem, and um, and they would like to try him there. Um, and he, he says, hey, by the way, I'm a Roman citizen. Mm. Oh, oh! So you want to go to Rome to be tried? Yes, I play that card. I'm going to Rome. Uh, well, that meant a whole different thing. Uh, so even, by the way, think about <laughs> how we went. He gets on a boat. Well, the boat doesn't have a cell. First of all, you're confined to the boat, so you can't really get off. <laughs> right. Uh, and by the way, he's with several hundred other prisoners, uh, and they're all getting transferred to Rome. Uh, and he's actually, uh, per se, you know, enjoying, in a sense, the boat ride. Now, the boat had a problem because it shipwrecked, which he said is going to happen, <laughs> um, and they all shipwrecked. But it wasn't like he was, he was shackled. It was uh, he was functioning with a small degree of freedom, goes to Rome, and gets into what's called house arrest. So he's in, he's in really a place where uh, uh, he has freedom to walk around. Uh, he can't leave. And there's guards there, by the way. So right. there's still the, there's still the uh, centurion but guards. But it's not the oppressive prison that others have been. No, and there's not, he's not shackled and he's not uh, mm -hmm. uh, fully oppressed. And people could basically, for him, it was mm -hmm. everybody could come and visit him. And mm. they would bring him stuff, like bring him special right. food, special items. Right. And uh, even just encouragement. Have yeah. encouragement. And by the way, what is he doing? Well, Paul is writing right. Ephesians, Colossians, and Philippians. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's part of his last piece of fruit that he left on earth. And it, actually, then he finishes with First and Second Timothy. Uh, right. Those are the last two books that are, that are written in prison as well. So um, his place... And, and so now he's not getting beaten anymore. Mm -hmm. He's not being persecuted anymore, interesting enough. Right. Because uh, they say, well, you're in jail. We don't, you know. And not actually living in fear. He's not he's in fear. In, in a lot of ways, set free to do exactly what God is calling him to do. Exactly. His and fruit, to broadcast it to a larger audience. That's right. His fruit was to document, write down mm -hmm. 
through inspiration, the truths of Ephesians, Philippians, right. and Colossians. And, uh, and he actually enjoyed it mm-hmm. because um, he was not having to uh, go through all of even traveling around. He actually got to kind of sit, relax, and focus on the Word. And the Holy Spirit, remember, uh, and he says this in, in the Timothy, uh, the, in the Bible, uh, actually we could read that, and it will be kind of an interesting statement that we should all read. Um, uh, let's go to um, uh, Philippians, uh, excuse me, First Timothy, might be Second Timothy, uh, hold on. Second Timothy, hold on. Okay. Pulled up the wrong one. Uh, so go to Second Timothy chapter three and read verses uh, uh, ten through seventeen. Second Timothy three, and this is again. He, this has happened to be the last book that he's writing, but he makes a statement about about the word. Great. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through the faith which is in christ jesus all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work yeah uh, all scripture mm-hmm. old testament new testament uh, is is what inspired Yes. By God. Um, and the word there is God breathed. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit is communicating, the, having uh, understanding, truth, discernment, uh, be able to be written down. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't just a dictation. Uh, it was processing to where... So you're saying this, and this is what I need to understand. And yeah, so it's a pro- that's why, by the way, prison for Paul wasn't just, yeah, I just uh, I just sat here and, and took dictation mm-hmm. uh, for a few months. It was no, it was day after day after day. He's processing. Right. Uh, well, my understanding is this, and mm-hmm. what I've heard is this, and how does this work? And it would be similar to what we what we are teaching in uh, Revelation. Mm-hmm. Uh, John, they, Jesus said to John, "What? Come and write see. Write this down. Yep, come and see and write this down. Write it down it matters. And start to listen. Mm-hmm. And then remember, Revelation is structured with, okay, I've seen this. Could you show me more about this? Mm-hmm. And then it goes into a deeper place. Right. It's not sequential. It's like, oh, it kind of backtracks. And that's kind of how Paul Paul did it, um, is, right? Or anybody that wrote it. And was, really, isn't that how we abide? That's how we abide. Is, <laughs> yeah. I heard you say. I understand this. Mm-hmm. How does this work? Uh, and that's what Paul was doing. Was he was processing? Uh, by the way, stemming, and that's why we see it um, all the way back uh, when he became a believer. Remember, he was converted on the way to Damascus. Uh, where? And I asked this. I just asked this of a group uh, this week. Uh, where did where, what happened to him after his, his uh, conversion? I, I guess he just started teaching the Bible, you know. Like, uh, no, no, he uh, went away for like three home. years, he right? Yeah, he goes home, process to Tarsus mm-hmm. because he was a Pharisee. He was extremely knowledgeable of the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. What he did was went back all the way through it, literally. I believe right. verse by verse by verse for three years. And said, "Okay, this is what's written. Give me now the the, the better, fuller communication." Because Jesus mm-hmm. said, "By the way, 
which he, which Paul would have heard already. And Paul had a phenomenal foundation to build foundation. upon once he was given the truth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jesus said, I have come not to abolish the Old Testament, mm -hmm. but to fulfill it. Right. Okay, so Paul said, okay, I get that. So he went through the Old Testament. Well, how did you fulfill this? How did mm -hmm. you fulfill this? How, what does this look like? What does this mean? So when he's in, in prison, which he's in a, a uh, you know, and, and we, would, we would call it, you know, for us, a country club. And it's not as luxurious. <laughs> right, right. Uh, as we're portraying that, you know, is that we think, oh, man, I, I've been at the country club. I know what that, you know, eh, it's not quite that luxurious. It's, but it was just more freedom and not so much restriction. And it was, right. pl it was pleasant. Uh, and mostly for him, so he had a nice bed, good food, uh, and by the way, um, he even had the freedom. Uh, I believe he had, uh, they, I think they had a little kitchen, so to speak. I think he could make his own food. Yeah, uh, I had read something about that as well. Uh, yeah. So he could do that, but people would bring him stuff. and uh, So he was living, just think of it in kind of a, you know, a, a, a small house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he couldn't go out of the house, but he was living in a small house, and he's not confined where it's oppressive. It actually was enjoyable for him, pleasant, and both mostly, by the way, time with God, where he was inspired. All Scripture is inspired, God breathed by God, and profitable for, for us to live it out. Um, and then he got people consistently to come visit him, right? Um, and which, which he loved. Mm -hmm. talk to him and when they visited remember it wasn't like hey I'm here uh, uh, like in a hospital visit I'm here for 20 minutes and I gotta go if I visit you I'm staying here for the next week or two right uh, to be with you and we're gonna process you know so it, it was pretty cool uh, so yeah his his experience uh, wasn't as harsh as we might have thought having read right. other situations right where we said man that seems that seems kind of awful Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, Paul's attitude toward all that was what? Even he got, and he just, he actually just spoke it. Uh, I got beat. I got, I got persecuted. I got thrown out of town. I got put in jail. What was Paul's attitude about that? It's all for, for God. It was yeah. all for gain. Yeah, it's yeah. like, okay. Uh, uh, and he says, this is actually in, in 2 Timothy 2, he says this. Um, I was delivered out of all of them. Uh, so he says, yeah, I'm persecuted. Yeah, this I, I have negative consequences. But every single time, God just restored me. Right. And I, and I got And doesn't that it. speak to the faithfulness of God? And yeah. even like if there's a listener sitting here in a season right now that is full of pain and everything else, just knowing God is a God who delivers and That's meets it. you in that place and brings fruit in the mist. And, and he uses those times. He can redeem and restore them. That's right. That's right. And, th and that's, again, through the condition of the covenant, which we say is that it's a two-way deal. In order for God to deliver the covenant, you got to be with me. And if you choose mm -hmm. not to, I'll allow you to, but now you miss out. Let's say you're suffering. you got pain. you got things that aren't working too well. And uh, usually the attitude is, I'm kind of mad. I thought God was in control and I thought everything was going to be great and it's not. I don't get it. How come, how come, how come? And by the way, I'm asking you God to take care of it and when you do, then I'll, then I'll feel better and I'll be happy and I'll follow you. God says, well, it's the other way around. Um, right. You got to follow me and I'll do it. Right. And that's why we're, we're talking so much about the covenant is mm -hmm. it's absolutely true. It's going to happen. Um, it starts with, I don't know about that. And I've not experienced it, and it, I haven't seen a lot of Christians experience it. And Rich, are you, you and Kathy, are you guys kind of just out there with some personal thing that, that you're trying to get everybody to believe, but nah, it's not really true? We say the opposite. Right. Uh, we know it's true. We learned it. And we're saying to everybody, well, why don't you go, why don't you go find out? Right. Uh, don't believe anything we say. Uh, get in the Word. Uh, and process it through. Start dialoguing with God. Start dialoguing yeah. with God and, and ask Him. Say, I got a problem. I got an mm -hmm. issue. I'm suffering. I got. I got this. I got that. I need help. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Come with me. Let me deliver it to you. Uh, and we're and we're talking about the covenant. Uh, and that um, one of the thing is that uh, we said that He's loyal to the covenant, and He's going to command the very things that He uh, offers of 
uh, a member, I'm going to bless you to make you a blessing. He says, I will command this. Uh, and so we're in this section right now. Uh, we've gone through the covenant. I'm loyal to the covenant. I'm faithful to it. Um, and then he makes some statements about, uh, remember, I'm going to bless you to make you a blessing. One of the things that he commands is the blessing. Right. Uh, which, by the way, is, is what we would like to receive. It's like, okay, great. Yes. <laughs> I'd like that. Uh, so let's go to Deuteronomy 28, uh, 8. 28, 8. This is in the middle of, hey, if you follow me, hear my voice. Uh, these blessings will come upon you. He makes a statement about this in Deuteronomy 28, 8. Says the Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all which you set set your hand, and He will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. So He says, "What I'm going to command what blessing upon your storehouses mm -hmm. uh, and everything that you put your hand to." So, in this context, He's saying, uh, "I am uh, going to charge the activities." to produce uh, your storehouses to be filled up and for whatever you're doing in work, uh, I'm going to bless it. Now, uh, we gotta be careful with that. Right. Because then we can say, okay, great. Um, mm -hmm. I got a problem in my business or my, my job isn't doing too well or my boss is awful, so take care of it. Right. And He's, if we're not careful, we begin to idolize the outcome yes. rather than focusing purely on God and who he is. Yeah. And so, again, that's why he makes the beginning statements in Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. If you hear my voice mm -hmm. and you follow me, the blessings come upon you. So what he's saying not is... Not chasing the blessing. That's it. So that um, right. you're saying... Uh, I'm going to follow you. And he says, follow me into the place mm -hmm. where I can fill your barn, or your, your, mm -hmm. your uh, storehouses. And remember, it's all relative to his, his, his place for you in life. So that, right. uh, you know, I know uh, CEOs of big companies, $100 million companies, billion dollar companies, mm -hmm. um, they got bigger storehouses. <laughs> um, I don't look at it as, well, I want that. Um, right give me that storehouse. He just says, well, how about your storehouse, Rich? Uh, where you're, you have, uh, and think about storehouse. Uh, and let's just take something simple. And we've all, we've all experienced this probably even through COVID. You went to the store mm -hmm. and you couldn't get toilet paper. Right. <laughs> you couldn't get meat. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, ideally, what would you like in order to function, for those things to be full, that I to got, be easy to I've access got it. at my house, mm -hmm. I've got stuff stored up, mm -hmm. so that when the issue comes, right. I'm not destitute or I, I don't not have impacted I don't so have hard anything. I have what enough mm -hmm. to sustain me through it. Because remember, a storehouse is just provision. Right. Um, and it, and it, it's just, I'm going to give you the ability to have provision, safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the downside's going to come. But you still can have, you know, have the six rolls of toilet paper in your storehouse mm -hmm. that when you can't get any at the store, your storehouse has it. Right. Uh, now, by the way, and just think of how simple this is. If you're a couple, well, you need certain a number. If you have... If you have eight kids, you need a bigger place. You're going to need more. <laughs> You're going to need more, you know. Uh, so um, God knows. Uh, mm -hmm. And he says, I'll, I'll give you for a storehouse. And then your work, um, I'm going to command blessing on your work, uh, what you put your hands to, and that's what your activity is. And by the way, that isn't even income producing. It's just, it's just what you do, you know, so that, um, uh, you know, like for you, you know, you're not out working at a store or an income, right? you are, you know, mother, wife, discipler, uh, mm -hmm. retreat leader. Um, that is your called work by God. Right. And God says, I'm going to bless that. Right. Uh, I'm going to make that fruitful. Okay, now why? Well, because you've joined him mm -hmm. where I've given you your assignment. Mm -hmm. um, and you aren't going off saying, well, that's nice, but I'm going to go be... Uh, head of a, a women's committee at church. Well, God said, I didn't ask you to do that. Right. Um, so 
you got to you got to attach those two things together. I can bless you where you're working if you're what. Working if you're working where, where, where I'm I bless asking you. you to work. Yeah. If you're working where I bless you. Yeah. And you got to join me where I'm at, mm-hmm. and that's why a lot of people don't experience blessing in their work because they're off doing their own thing. Mm-hmm. The guy says, "Well, you're not going to get blessed, or you can't be blessed." And out of good intentions, often. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. come, if you come be with me, I'll assign you the work. Mm-hmm. I'll show you what it's like, and then I will. I'm going to command. Mm-hmm. that what you're part of experiences the, the positiveness of it. And by the way, because we're in a wicked world, guess what? Even there, we're going to have what? Trouble. Trouble. Uh, because we're in, a, we're in an imperfect world with, with self-centered people. Uh, and so it's not like perfection. It's rather you're enjoying the place that I've given you to be. Uh, and so like I, I deal with even uh, executives right now who are, you know, they're in, they're in their own private businesses. Uh, I've gone through a lot with COVID. Uh, and um, the issue is, well, shouldn't God bless my business? And I said, well, you got to go the other direction. Uh, what do you have to say about this, Father? Because he said he's going to bless you. Right. I said, actually, he may either take you out of here, move on to something else, or maybe, you know what, this is supposed to end because the blessing's going to be next right. uh, in what you have. So be careful not to say, well, here's my business bless my business. He says, no, I bless you. Um, and you follow me and this business may not succeed, but I have something else for you. Do you trust me? I will bless the work of your hands if you have a heart to come and be with me. Uh, and by the way, take my assignments and work is critical. It's important. He right. built that as part of our nature. Adam and Eve, he said, what did, what did he tell him? Get to work, have yes. career, have occupation. Uh, so it's important. He says, so I want to bless provision by the way that comes through wisdom being faithful tithing saving not overspending uh, thinking about provision thinking about storehouse do I even have a storehouse uh, do I have safety in my uh, bank accounts so that if something happens I can cover it or right. am I living hand to mouth and I'm not following anything that God's asking me yeah. to do and even in that though so even as you speak to that I think of there are people that that are called to particularly steward and to have storehouse. And then there are people whose God's calling on them is, you know, you are to walk in the moment Yes. and I, and watch me provide. Yeah. And I've seen some beautiful, beautiful stories of people just being faithful to follow God, not knowing honestly how he was going to provide and him doing the supernatural over and over and being glorified in their faithfulness to step regardless yeah. and not out of lack of stewardship, but out of a step of faith. Yeah. So yeah, Even it's always, that, it's, it's his faith. instruction. It's yeah. his instruction. Yeah. So we'll continue this uh, discussion of uh, where he says, I'm going to command, uh, remember, I'm going to bless you to make you a blessing. He said, I'm going to command it, which in, mm-hmm. in essence, remember, what does that mean? It's going to happen. Right. What, how? I take care of it. You be with me. I take care of it. I'm going to deliver it to you. And it's uh, who Because he is. I can make it happen mm-hmm. by speaking to it. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that next time. So we'll Excellent. we'll pick it up uh, where we talk about commanding blessing, but it's uh, it's quite uh, fun. Uh, and I would love for you to send questions at questions at afjministry.com or on the on the YouTube channel. And uh, we'd love for you to invite others. I know Kathy, you you uh, have the great uh, saying about that, and uh, we we really <laughs> encourage people. <laughs> yes, be a friend and tell yeah. a friend. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for joining us, everyone, but absolutely be passing this on. And it's, you know, there is an urgency to the time we're living in, this Kairos moment of God where he has anointed this time, I do believe, for people to learn to truly abide in him and walk with him. Yeah. So bring him along the journey. Yep. All right, <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. All right, take care. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.